Praise the Lord. We're looking at um, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9. It says, Thou, when thou art come into the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn. Thou shalt not learn. Say that with me. Thou shalt not learn. Say that again. Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of these nations. As we consider the subject today, freedom from witchcraft, there are people and there are churches, there are so-called Christians that try to learn a lot about witchcraft. And there may be some members among us or some leaders among us that their concentration is to want to learn about witchcraft. In fact, some people know more about witchcraft than the weapons of our warfare, able to bring down strong holes. Other people learn so much about Satan that they know much more about Satan than about Christ. Of course, when you know more about Satan than about Christ, you will not know anything about your liberation, about your deliverance, about your dominion, about your power. Some people go far in learning about darkness. All they learn, they want to read this and read that and read other things about darkness. They know not enough about the light. It's like you study much about sin. I know nothing about the Savior. That doesn't solve your problem. And so when we come to this and it says freedom from witchcraft, we could have said freedom from stealing. Now, when we talk about freedom from stealing, you're not learning about stealing. You're learning about the person that's able to deliver you from stealing. Freedom from drunkenness. You don't want to learn so much about drunkenness. And then you know nothing about your dominion, your victory, triumph over the drunkenness. You don't want to learn about Pharaoh. Are you nothing about Moses? What if the children of Israel were, you know, Pharaoh is tormenting them and this and that. And they want to learn so much about Pharaoh and know this and know this and know his coming in, his going out, his secret, his power, his magicians and all the things that Pharaoh had. And yet they knew nothing about Moses. They learned about the world, not knowing anything about the world of his power. They knew so much about evil spirits, but you know nothing of the Holy Spirit. That's the reason I'm not giving you a chance to ask questions this morning. Somebody is going to come up there, and uh, this one is walking over this and walking over this. What kind? And already we heard, no weapon that is fashioned against me shall prosper. I said I knew that already, no, ve no weapon that is fashioned against, against me shall prosper. And if I know that, that's all I need to know. Now, I want to correct some notions about, uh, you know, this uh, thing you call a uh, witchcraft. Or, you know, people run after this and run after that. And I pray that as you know the truth, the truth will set you free in Jesus' name. Amen. Jeremiah, I'm reading from chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10, I'm reading here from verse 2. In Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 3, it says, Thus says the Lord, is there is the word of the Lord. And so whether you are a private Christian or you are kind of a public minister or you are, uh, you know, an evangelical church, a Pentecostal church, here is the word of the Lord. It says, thus says the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Go and throw all those books away. All the things you bought on, you know, this will uh, kind of educate you and enlighten you and teach you and instruct you about evil spirit, about witchcraft, about the wizard, about the witches, about the sorcerers, about the soothsayers, and about the occultic man, about the paths of darkness, about territorial spirits, about the bush spirit, and the mammoth spirit, and the sky spirit, and this and that. Where did you get all that? It's The Lord says, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. 
you know, some people go through the zodiac and they want to learn about if you are born in January or born in February or you are born in May or we are born in November and then they want to be able to decipher and discern and know this and that. The size of the sky and then what the stars mean and what this means and what that means. And meanwhile, they know nothing about Calvary, about the cross, about the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself and died for us and redeemed us from because of the law. And here the Lord says, learn not the way of the heathen and learn not and don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them. You see, this uh, kind of uh, hidden knowledge is what ruined Adam and Eve. Satan came to Adam and Eve in the form of a serpent and said, don't you want to know? Because there are some things God is keeping away from you. And some people feel today there are some things the church is keeping from them. There are some things uh, these ministers and pastors, preachers are keeping from them. And so they want to double into this and you know, died into that other thing because, you know, the church will not teach us that. Therefore, we need to examine and learn for ourselves. You get into deep waters, you might even get into real, uh, very funny. So I'm looking at Genesis chapter 3. I read from verse 1. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, He shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye tell me. Tell me, neither shall ye if you're not going to read it, why are you touching it? If you're not going to read it, why are you buying the book? If you're not going to practice it, why are you learning it? If you're, going, if you're not going to join them, what do you want to know about them? Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God does know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as, go as God. Tell me the next word there. Knowing, 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 knowing good and evil. You know, people, that's all they want to concentrate on. They want to know good and evil. They want to know what those people are doing. They want to know what initiation means. They want to know what those covenants mean. They want to know when, you, when they do this, what they do in the night, and what they do in the midnight, or what they do at 3 o'clock, early in the morning. And then when just about to dawn, when their power is greatest, they want to know this and this and that. And that's what the devil used for Eve. And eventually got the whole world into trouble. I'm looking at Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2 and we're looking at verse 24. Revelation chapter 2 verse 24. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Tatira, as many as have not this doctrine, which have not known the depths of Satan, which have not known the depths of Satan, the Lord was commending some people, some believers in Tatira. He said, thank God you are not inquisitive. Thank God you are not searching. Thank God you don't want to know. You don't know the depths of Satan. And he says, as they speak, I will put none, I will put upon you none other body. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. We have enough already. We know enough already. We know enough of Christ, our Savior, our Sanctifier, our Healer, our Deliver, our Liberator, the Captain of our service. You will know that already. And what you know, hold that fast. Don't allow anybody to take that from me. In fact, it is the knowledge of this, the knowledge of Christ, of the light, of the Word, of His power, of the Holy Ghost, of the immersion baptism in the Holy Ghost that gives us the victory. It's not the knowledge of, you know, all these uh, other things. If you check up, You'll find that those who go to those churches and they know about Satan, about witchcraft, about sorcery, about darkness, about the depths of Satan, they're not free. They're not free. Their lives is totally filled with fear. They know nothing of Psalm 23. They know nothing of Psalm 27. They know nothing of Psalm 91. They know nothing of Isaiah 
54. Nothing about Isaiah chapter 41. You know nothing about Isaiah chapter 53. You know nothing about Luke chapter 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has appointed me, anointed me to deliver the oppressed and to give sight to the blind. All that they don't know. Nothing about First John chapter 4 verse 4. They know nothing about chapter 5, uh, First John verse 18. All they know is, you know, the secrets of Satan days and that. And they see Satan in every wind. They see Satan in every sunshine. They see Satan in every rainfall. They see Satan and they see witchcraft in any kind of a uh, downturn or any kind of family, any kind of problem. They see Satan there. But the Lord is saying that we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. I said, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now, uh, what, what kind of thing, what does the Bible say about witchcraft and about other things? You see, there are people that major on, you know, that's a witch, that's what you do. That's a wizard, that's what you do. That's a necromancer, that's what you do. And that is the other thing, that is what you do. And let's look at what the Word of God is saying. We're looking at Exodus chapter 22. Exodus chapter 22, and I'm reading to you there from verse 18. Exodus chapter 22, we're looking at verse 18. It says, Thou shalt not suffer, permit, allow a witch to live. Don't stop there. Go to the next verse. Whosoever lies with a beast shall surely put, be put to death. You see, there's no difference. If somebody is a witch in the land of Israel, they, too, they got rid of him. But that's not the only thing. Number two, if somebody was uh, found lying with a beast, to have um, sexual relationship with a beast, it will be stoned and killed. They didn't make any difference between, you know, this sin of witchcraft and this sin of, uh, you know, bestiality. And then it says in verse 20, He that sacrificeth to any god except unto the Lord only, he shall surely be destroyed. If somebody was worshipping idol, the same thing. They got rid of the person. So, if somebody is an idolatrous fellow, or is a witch, or is having a moral relationship with an animal, they got rid of them. The same thing. They didn't uh, isolate, uh, you know, witchcraft as the only thing. Look at verse 22. It says, Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If thou afflict them in any wise, and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword. You see, if somebody afflicted a widow, oppressed a widow, the same thing they will do. So, it's not that, you know, witchcraft is the only thing in the land of Israel, get rid of them. The people that oppress orphans, the people that oppress widows, they are also got to reach up. And so don't make any kind of difference in your mind. Somebody is a witch, I cannot, we cannot tolerate that. Somebody is a thief, all right, uh, you know, don't do that again. The other fellow is committing abortion, you know, don't do that again. The other fellow is uh, oppressing innocent people. Well, he's just, he has a very strong personality and character. No, all of them are dealt with the same way. Leviticus chapter 20. And I'm reading there first from verse 6. Leviticus chapter 20. Well, first of all, look at verse 6 and then we're back up to verse 1. So that you see that God deals with all these uh, things in the same way. We're looking at Leviticus chapter 20, say, chapter 20 verse 6. It says in verse 6, Leviticus 20. Look at this in verse 6. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go and warring after them, I will even set my face against that soul. You see that? Uh, those who go after familiar spirit, even though they may not have the familiar spirit themselves, but they go after them like Saul did. The Lord said, I will set my face against that soul. I will cut him off from among his people. But please... That's not the only thing. Look at it now from verse 1. It says, and, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying again, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his son of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death, and the people of the land shall stone him with stones. You see that? Somebody gave uh, his child to, you know, idolatry. And the Lord said, I'll get rid of that person too. It, was, it says, and I will set my face against that man. 
what I will do against the witch, I'll set my face against that man. Against familiar spirit, I'll set my face against that man. The same thing I will do to the people that give their children to serve idolatry. I will set my face against that man. I will cut him off from among his people. And because he hath given of his seed unto Molech, and to defile my sanctuary, and to profane my holy name, if, and if the people of the land, listen to this, do any ways hide their eyes from the man when he giveth of his seed unto Molech and kill him not. Then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off. And all that go a warring after him to commit wardom with Molech from among their people. Even the people that, you know, will not discipline those who do evil. God says, I'll set my face against them. And so, the Lord is not isolating just that, as, you know, people think, and they just feel that that's the only thing. No. He sets his face against every form of sin. Leviticus chapter 26, I'm reading from verse 14. Leviticus 26, we're looking at verse 14. You see, he said, I'll set my face against them. That is, if you are doing evil secretly, it's not just witchcraft, you're committing abortion secretly, you're committing adultery secretly, committing fornication secretly, and you're stealing secretly, or you're doing any evil, you're living in sin, and you're hiding it. The Lord says, if your leader does not know, your pastor does not know, your people do not know, I will know about you, I'll set my face against you. It says, chapter 26, I'm reading from verse 14. It says, but if ye will not hearken unto me, I will not do all these commandments. If ye shall despise my statutes, and or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do unto you. It says, and I will even appoint over you terror and consumption, and the burning egg, and then it says uh, that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemy shall eat it. And I will set my face against you. You see that? Those who don't keep to the commandments of God, the Lord says, I set my face against them. What does the New Testament say? The same thing. Look at Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. The New Testament does not isolate witchcraft and say, uh-uh, this is the apex sin. This is the peak of all sins. This is the heinous sin. And this is the unforgivable sin. This is the untouchable sin. Once anybody does this, that, that, that's all. It's done. The greatest sin that could ever be done. It classifies witchcraft with all the other sins. And if you are not into witchcraft, you are into the other one. You have the same condemnation. Galatians chapter 5. And I'm reading here from verse 19. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. The, the reason why people isolate witchcraft and separate is because of uh, the lack of faith. They don't have faith. And they know that, you know, a, a thief cannot touch their property because they keep uh, or that on that lock and key that, you know, I, I know my property, I know the thieves are there, therefore I lock everything up. And uh, I know that, you know, the adulterer cannot touch my wife, therefore I keep my wife so they don't fear that. I know that, uh, you know, all these oppressors will not touch me because I don't go to, but which, I don't, I, those people, they are terrible. And they can, from a distance, they can do this and that, but I cannot do that again. I said they cannot do that. That's why people, they, they classify all these things. But the New Testament doesn't do anything about that. In fact, if you look at the New Testament, it says when Philip was in Samaria, there was this uh, Simon who had bewitched the people with all this occultism. And when Philip got there, Philip did not fear him. And the moment Philip manifested the power of God, and those people were saved, all, they became an ordinary person. They, they had no power anymore, no authority, and no position anymore, not in Samaria. And it was when Peter and John came and laid hands on people, they received the Holy Ghost. And no who recognized Simon now? The sorcerer, nobody. Then he came and said, give me of this part that whosoever I lay my hands, he will uh, receive the Holy Ghost. And Peter was not afraid. Be, be careful you talk to those people because, you know, if you are not careful the way you talk, they might do this or do that. 
not bitter. He said, thy money perish with thee. You are the God of bitterness. And then he said, pray for me that these things will not come upon me. Did he fear them anymore? And we don't fear them in Jesus' name. And here you find Paul coming to your purpose. And then you find this uh, sorcerer by Jesus. And then was trying to dissuade the uh, deputy from receiving the gospel. He said, thou child of Satan, enemy of all righteousness, the hand of the Lord is upon you. You will be blind, not seeing the sun for some days. Immediately a mist came upon him. He was led by the hand, led away to another place. The believers were not afraid of them. We're not afraid of them in Jesus' name. And here comes the, the damsel that was running after them. These are the servants of the most high God that shown to us the way of salvation. And you know, Paul allowed him to, allowed her to do that for some days, thinking she would cool down. She didn't cool down. And then Paul just turned. She did not have to, you know, go and fast and pray and do something. Just turned and said, that he was be come out of that lady. And then came out the same hour. It will come out in Jesus' name. How do you see that the New Testament church did not fear all these things? And then we, because of, you know, the knowledge you have from the mountain, from the valley, from the riverside, from this and that, uh, from all these uh, kind of new generation churches that they major on darkness. They don't major on the light. They major on Satan. They don't major on Christ. Uh, it's because you are not staying here. All your heart, all your soul, all your mind. You're, you know, on Sunday you are here, on Monday you are here in deeper life. And then all the other days you are finding out what they are doing there, what they are doing there, what they are doing there. Come back and settle. I said, come back and settle. All these things you are picking up, they are the things that bring fear into the hearts of people. And then all the faith we are talking about, your faith is at a low level. Throw all those things. When you get back home now, you have all those, uh, you know, prayer something. They say, when this happens, read this prayer. When that happens, read the prayer. And then secretly, you know, you come to the revival at the third weekend. And, you know, God manifests his power. And then you go back, you pick up your old book again. Uh -uh, no wonder that the things you ought to have, you are not having them. But if you do what the smoker does with a cigarette, and then will throw the cigarette away, what the drunkard does with his uh, alcohol, throws everything away, do the same thing with all those books and occultism that you are learning this and learning that. If you throw them away, light will come immediately in Jesus' name. And uh, so we're looking at Galatians chapter 5. I'm looking at it from verse 19. It says, uh, not, not now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these. So it classifies everything together. It's not just that, you know, this one is special, that one is special. What are those works of the flesh? Tell me number one. Tell me number two. Tell me number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. You see, it's not, it's witchcraft is there. And then it says, even hatred is there. And then it says that idolatry is there, fornication is there, adultery is there. There's no special thing about, you know, the witchcraft. In the mind of the New Testament writers, they were all sins, they were all works of the flesh. And it says if you are free from witchcraft and you are not free from fornication, it's still hellfire. If you're free from witchcraft, not free from adultery, it's still hellfire. You're free from witchcraft, you're not free from hatred. You know, your church may not discipline you for hatred. Your church may not discipline you for variance. Your church may not discipline you for rebellions. They just say, you know, he has a good taste. He has a different taste. He likes, you know, all these flamboyant things. They may not discipline you, but they may discipline you or somebody for witchcraft or for this other thing. They may not know about your adultery and they may not discipline you. They don't know, not know about your fornication. They may not discipline you, but once somebody says, hey, we suspect is a witch, you will suspect this, then the church may be, you say, for the benefit of the doubt, people are running away from him or from her. Therefore, sent her away from the church. They may discipline people for that, but look at the word of God. It says they're all the same. It says, um, you know, fornication, adultery, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, and variance, and relations, wrath, and strife, and seditions, and heresies, envies, and murders, and drunkenness, and revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, that I'm telling you before the judgment day, just as I've told you in time past, that they which do such things, tell me, shall not, shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And so if you are free from one, you are not free from the other. It's the same thing. And I pray that God will set you free in Jesus' name. I'm looking at 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. 
you see even the king that you know went into something like that and uh, the lord uh, that is uh, what he started with first samuel chapter 15 the lord told him to go and destroy the amalekites and he did not he destroyed some of them and then uh, led some to be free brought them back and then look at what the lord is saying now in chapter 15 of first samuel verse 22 and Samuel said, as the Lord has great delight in bunch offerings and sacrifices, as in obey the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken, tell me, than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Look up here for a moment. You know, in your mind, look at the church. As, as you look at the church, it, it surprises you. And we say, this is deeper life, Bible church. We find, um, you know, some people, they're stubborn, they're rebellious. Then we say, you know, that, that, that man is just, just tall. He's tough-minded. He's hard. We well, leave him alone. Because, you know, like all these uh, younger generations, we look at our young people as our children. And then they do this and that. They say, pastor, understand. Children are children. Children are going to be rebellious after salvation. So they say, leave them alone. But if we say that this child is a cultic, oh, they say, Pastor, we're afraid. Don't allow that child in to mix up with our children because that child that has witchcraft, this is it. Uh -huh. I about that other child that has rebellion. We're not studying the Bible. The Bible says, for rebellion is at the scene of witchcraft. You know, some of these uh, people that run about, you go to a particular place and they say they are praying for you and they say, ah, they say something. They, is, as your wife, uh, you know, agreed to come with you to this place, oh, he says, no, my wife is in deeper life. My wife says, she will, she will not come. And then the tactics they use is to say that uh, that wife is the one destroying your business. She's a witch. So go and call her and tell her that we said that woman is a witch. And then the husband comes back home and he says, uh, uh, my wife, let us go to this place. The wife says, I've told you before, I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm a child of God. I, you know, I'm going to live and die in that deeper life. Ah. I want to tell you, they say you are a witch. If you know you are not a witch, follow me. I'm not a witch, I'm not going to follow you. I said I'm not a witch, I'm not going to follow you. And so they will tell that man in that place, they will say, you want to keep a witch at home? If she is not ready to follow you, send her away. Separate from her, divorce her, go and marry another one. Because, you know, she's a witch, and if I, she should not even be alive. Now, but what she that man went to that church and said, Pastor, minister, deliverance minister, I have a problem. My problem is my wife has hard head, stubborn, rebellious. She will not listen to me. They will say, be patient with her. That, <laughs> you know, everybody, even if, if I tell you about my wife too, <laughs> will not live here today. That all the women are like that, just be gentle. If it's stubbornness and rebellion, we are with time. That will clear. But if it is witchcraft, uh-uh, send that away. How about the Bible? The Bible says, for rebellion is, tell me, as a sin of witchcraft. Witchcraft is a sin. Rebellion is a sin. And so we need to understand the word of God. The reason people are afraid is that if somebody is rebellious, you know, you push him aside, you push, push her aside. Because, okay, if you are rebellious, you want to go your way, go your way. That does not disturb my business. But if somebody is a witch, uh -huh, I cannot just overlook it because that will disturb my business. They are thinking of their business. They are not thinking of Christ. But if you know that Christ is your, somebody is rebellious, somebody is witchcraft, it's, it's their problem, not your problem. And the Lord will preserve you from them in Jesus' name. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. Stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. You know, let's say, for example, you call somebody and you say, my friend, I've been looking at you. There's something I want to tell you. They are waiting for you to, you know, throw the bombshell. It looks like you always want to have your way. You are stubborn. Is that all you wanted to say? Yes, that's what I wanted to say. You are stubborn. Okay, you know, I'm stubborn. That's all right. 
that's all right. I just want to tell you that it's not good. I understand, I understand. But I'm a man of my own will. I'm a woman of my own will. But if you call that woman and you said, can I talk to you? I said, okay, go ahead. You know, I've just discovered you are a witch. Ah, the flare up. I'm a witch, I'm a witch. And, you know, she called me a witch. But whether you are stubborn or you are a witch, any difference? There's no difference. There's no difference at all. Both are condemned before the Lord. What the Lord is saying is, whatever your sins are, go back to the cross and put them at the feet of Christ and then say, Lord, whether it's witchcraft or stubbornness or rebellion or idolatry or adultery or fornication or whatever, put everything at the feet of the cross and then you're free today in Jesus' name. And that's what the Lord wants us to know that, you know, we don't uh, want to capitalize on this and that. And the freedom will come to us in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 8, and we're looking at verse 19, all through to verse 20. Isaiah chapter 8, we're looking at verse 19. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. It says, And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep, and that mortar, should not a people seek unto their God, for the living to the dead, to the law, and to the testimony. And to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Anything different from what we have learned this morning is because that person does not have the light. It's been majoring on evil spirit. He wants to have a major degree on evil spirit, on Satan, on witchcraft. Why don't you take your, you know, take your studies and take your degree on Christology and know all about Christ and know nothing about Satan. If you know more about Christ and you know nothing of Satan, you are going to have the victory. I said you are going to have the victory. Before we pray, take your hymn book out and look at hymn number 216. 216. You want to learn more about the Lord, more about our deliverer, more, more about Jesus, what I know, more of his grace to all the show, more of his saving fullness, see, more of his love who died for me, more about Jesus, let me, let me, more about Jesus, let me learn. More of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher be, showing the things of Christ, not of Satan, not of witchcraft, showing the things of Christ to me. More about Jesus in his word. Holding communion with my Lord. Hearing his voice in every line. Making each faithful saying mine. More about Jesus on his throne. Riches in glory all his own. More of his kingdom's sure increase. More of his coming prince of peace. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness. See, more of his love who died for me. Let's rise up and pray. Pray to the Lord and give him the glory. Cast out all that fear, fear of Satan, fear of evil spirits, Fear of witches, fear of wizards, fear of the powers of darkness, fear of men, fear of women, fear of children, fear of the night, and fear of the day. And understand, if you have the sin of stubbornness,
the sin of rebellion. You're not better than a witch. You're all in the same category in the sight of the Lord. If you're an adulterer, an adulteress, a fornicator, you're not better than a witch. You're all in the same class. Homosexual, lesbian, a thief, a rogue. You're not better than a witch. God classifies all of you together. Idol worshiper. Covetous man, greedy man, greedy woman, oddly man, oddly woman. You're not better than a witch. All in the same class. You repent of one, as you repent of the other. That stubborn will, I'll have my way. I'll do it my own way. Rebellion. If you don't repent of it, you'll go to the same hell as the witches go. Sin, all sins are deadly in the sight of the Lord. Come to Christ. Repent of your curiosity. Wanting to know about darkness. Rather than the light, wanting to know of Satan, rather than Christ, wanting to know more about witchcraft, rather than a weapon of warfare that pulls down. All the strongholds of the devil. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel is good news. Throw away the bad news. All the information you have about Satan and about witches, about wizards, that's bad news. Throw the bad news away. Believe the gospel. Believe the good news. And no weapon that is passionate against you shall prosper. 